Hello and welcome back to my Stephanie Hans covers video. If you are watching this, you did not see the first one, you can find it somewhere else on my channel. This is part two. And we start off here with the cover to a hardcover called Galathea. Um, I don't know much about this other than it was self-published by Stephanie Hans in France. Um, and this is actually book two, I just realized. This is book one. Um, she describes the art as kind of like primitive or, you know, her in the beginning, clearly, you know, she's advanced since this. But if you look at this, uh, in the interiors, you can see a lot of her signature styles. Even here, the hair like this, something, even the pose of this person looking up. Um, this is clearly Hans, um, you know, if you look at it, even the hair there, some of these landscapes. It's not as sophisticated as her later stuff, but back in 2006 for a starting artist, this is pretty, pretty nice. So if you're ever looking for those, uh, I went to amazon.co.uk, looked on the UK version of the site and was able to find them pretty cheap. All right, here we have one of the few things she's done where it's just a cover for a hardcover. And this is Ghost in the Shell Global Neural Network. I don't know anything about Ghost in the Shell. Um, I know that when I first looked at this, I just focused on this shadowy figure here. Everything is floating. It wasn't until like the third time I looked at this, I realized there was actually a person here. Uh, really, really cool. Something recently she's been doing is the covers to Dark Agnes. A little uh, Robert Howard property, Conan and Bellet and all that. Um, Agnes hasn't been used before. Marvel has the rights. So Becky Cloonan is writing a four-issue miniseries. And here's issue one and issue two. Some of the most glorious work that she's done has been on this uh, Greg Pak Storm run. And this is one of my all-time favorites. This here is a uh, variant to number three. And I'm just going to leave it there for a second. That's simply beautiful. Uh, really amazing work. And issue four. Issue five. Six. I love this one with the cell phone and looking out the train window. Or the car window, I guess. No, plane. Sorry, because there's a uh, oxygen bag. Not bad. <laughs> and I love this one. Seven. Eight is also amazing. I don't like Gambit, but still cool cover. Nine. Ten. And here's another absolutely stunning one. Might want to take that out, put it in a top loader, and put it with the rest of my other covers that are the ones I showed at the beginning of the previous video. And I guess she was not on 12 for this, if I recall correctly, because I don't have it, and I think I, I think I, I think I have it. I just don't think it's a Hans cover, so I didn't bother uh, getting it. A few X books that she's done recently, or not recently, but over time. Here's here's a recent one. Powers of X is this number one. This is a 125 variant, really, really beautiful. Uh, this is a throwaway cover. I mean, this is, you know, cheap one, X-Men, Extreme X-Men 7.1. This is one of my absolute favorite um, covers of hers. I don't know what it is I like about this so much, but I just think this is uh, beautiful colors, maybe. I don't know, I don't know why this one isn't more popular. This was a an incentive variant, Jean Grey, and I love the little bubble here with Jean Grey in. Uh, Jean Grey number one, Phoenix Resurrection number three, and you can see red is her favorite color. There's an A versus X variant um, that's very similar. There it is, A versus Avengers versus X Men. Um, I think this is issue zero, and a nice red fire there. Next up, we have a few covers done in the Star Wars. One, this is the Rebel Base Comics and Toys, variant edition to Star Wars number one. Here is the uh, Poe Dameron 1640th, uh, what is it, 40th anniversary. 
uh, Star Wars 40th Anniversary comics. It says it up there in the top corner. What I like about this is, you know, you've got to look carefully to see Vader and Leia. And it looks almost like, the stars almost look like snow to me in this. Really, really love that. And here definitely is some snow. Dr. Aphra number 20, 32, does it say? 32, wow. Greatest moments in Star Wars history. And then this variant addition to Han Solo number four. Also a nice one. You won't, oops, that's not supposed to be there. Um, there's a decent many series, wasn't the best, but still really nice cover. So let me get out the rest of these Alien Defiance. Get out of the way. So um, she did a variant to issue one that I don't have. And again, if you look at the uh, the light reflecting here, you got the alien there. Really, really cool. Uh, this is a Dark Horse one I don't know much about, but this is some of my favorite artwork altogether because each issue is so incredibly different. Um, you see the alien xenomorphs here. Just looks great. This is eight. <laughs> this is almost a venomized cover. It's just so great. Spaceship shooting by the mouth of this massive alien here. The teeth just look look amazing. That's number nine. Number ten. I love this one. All the aliens just hanging by their their toes or feet, whatever you want to call it. There. And then, aliens defiance number eleven. Number 12. So I think I'm only missing the variant to number one, but I could be wrong. There might be one or two more that I'm missing from this this run. We'll have to see. Uh, we've got a bunch of Marvel here. Let's see if we can pull out a decent amount. That should be enough right there. Start with A Force number one. First appearance of Singularity, and that is Singularity right there. And A-Force 10, I don't really love this one. One of my least favorite, uh, least favorite, probably because She-Hulk looks like she's in underwear, not a bathing suit. I don't know. Not not a big fan of that one. Um, but there you go. Fear Itself, Sidden's Past. There is a compilation one that she did the cover to that's like three different parts here, like three different comics um, going across horizontally. That's really cool. I don't happen to have that one. There's Thunderbolts. Hmm, I'm indifferent to this. Kind of cool, though. Uncanny Avengers. I didn't like any of the um, comics from this run that had the this, like, Civil War tie-ins that had the half of the... Uh, cover just one dark color. I thought that was really dumb. Um, so not a big fan of that. I am really big fan of this. Um, got this on an auction win and I was super excited because I really wanted this one for a long time. This is the 1 in 25 or 1 in 50 Ultimates 2 and obviously it's Captain Marvel and America Chavez Miss America. There, I, I thought this one would get more traction. It didn't. It's kind of plain. It's a little bit missing, but um, I just thought it was it was playful and colorful. I think the Adam Hughes cover is the more popular one for this series, but that's okay. I'll take my doubles. I'll take my Invisible Woman, Stephanie Hans, any day. This is another one that I love. I love that the Green Goblin is back here, and then there's the Snow Globe. And Gwen Stacy and you know by the Brooklyn Bridge aliens taking over Marvel's annotated uh, I think it's number three in this series book four sorry uh, Age of Conan Bellet number three this is a one in 25 I think not sure uh, oops we've got an Ask Guardians of the Galaxy number two that's beautiful too I love the green coming out there Gamora Venomized version number four and this very much looks like a character in um in die just the, the the stance not the actual look of the character uh but it's pretty cool and another guardians of the galaxy the stomp out bullying variant 
And again, I just love the, the playfulness here of the kids in the background and just sitting up here watching them. Is that Nebula, I think, just bent over like that saying hello. Very cool. Uh, yet another variant, Guardians of the Galaxy. This one, not much to it, but just the green and the purple, the way they play together is really kind of nice. And then yet another Guardians of the Galaxy comic bug variant number one. Cool. Jessica Jones fried pie variant. And then another Jessica Jones that she did. Which is kind of cool. This is issue three in the Bendis run. All the original covers in this were done by David Mack and just look amazing too. Cosmic Ghost Rider number one. Signed by Stephanie Hobbs. Totally Awesome Hulk Defenders variant. Not a big fan of this one either. This one I wasn't a fan of at first until, again, you look closer at the detail that she puts into to her work, especially kind of um, lower down below the Hulk's chest, Doctor Strange's arm, the Silver Surfer, and the Trident of Namor, and I'm like, wow, this is actually really cool. Uh, there's, I always do double takes with her work, and I don't find things um, as compelling at first as I do later when I see them. A uh, little Iron Fist as a variant, and then this Vote Loki, for another fried pie variant. Oh, so that was kind of cool. This was actually a good miniseries, too. Uh, Loki tries to corrupt a local news reporter to get favorable coverage for his run for Congress or Senator or President. I can't remember exactly. It is funny. Uh, let's start there. Another bunch of uh, Marvel books. This was from the uh, Jane Foster Valkyrie series number three and she just you know she said on her instagram she was trying something different here different color schemes than she's used to and i thought this was really very successful very much like the creatures from um the journey into mystery run that she did it looks very similar face there peter parker now this is one of her earlier ones secret life of spider-man this one she did the interior on i just since i don't collect the superior spider-man um i just put this in with my hans one this is not her on the cover though she's just on the interior of that shadowland spider-man there's a shadowland street hero that she did the cover to that i'm trying to find and i can never find it anywhere if anybody is aware of that one please let me know here's another black widow fried pie again i am of course missing the most famous and hard to find. They're expensive to buy if you do find it. Black Widow smoking gun cover. Dark Wolverine, number 87. I got two of those. And then she did, just did some one shots. Here's a Venomized Man thing, which is pretty cool. Here's a Namora, Woman of Marvel one shot. I actually don't know who Namora is. Wife of Namor, yes. This was the first work she did for the American uh, comic book industry, Firestar. And I think if you look at this and you look at the mask on the face, you can see where the idea for Ash was from Die was kind of like germinating in her brain a long time ago. You can see just in this one cover aspects of her work that go in all the other issues I've been going through. Just the, the hair, the fire, the red color, the stance. Um, a lot of, lot of great stuff in here. I uh, did that one already. It's Magneto. Um, I don't like Star-Lord, so I don't like anything with Star-Lord on, but I <laughs> just sit here and look at Groot. Really awesome, and even Gamora down here. It's a very cool cover, I dig it. Captain America, too much green, but the Hydra in the eye is really spectacular. Absolutely love that one. Absolutely love that. Is number seven from Nick Spencer's run, as well as this variant to Original Sin. Just, oh, this Black Widow with the eye there. It's just great. Great, great cover. Another one I don't think gets enough play. Not sure how I feel about this one. This Avengers Assemble issue two variant. Um, it's a different look for them, and I'm not sure if, if it goes. Um, 
Yeah, it's okay. I don't like lenticulars. There's a B cover to this that she did that's not the lenticular. Um, and that's the one that I want to get. I don't have that one yet, but I really want to get that one. This Mighty Thor looks very much uh, similar to her Journey into Mystery run. This is another nice cover. The big evil bad guy here kind of looks a little bit like Soul and, and Die. Uh, very, very cool. That's number 18 variant Mighty Thor. I assume Jason Aaron, but I'm not exactly sure which run that is in. Running out of room for comics here, trying not to pile too many comics on top of each other. Now, this is some of her most spectacular work, in my opinion. Um, Suicide Risk was a Jim Carrey book, and she did the variant covers for a number of the first issues, and then she did all the remaining covers. And I am missing one or two of them. But this is issue number one, and this is this is like all of her best features. Red background, hair out like this, just in one. Absolutely stunning. But this might be more stunning. I mean, this is almost like two separate paintings put together. It's just so, so incredible. Beautiful. Love that. Issue number two, again. I mean, I, I, these Suicide Risk covers are some of my absolute favorites. Um, just... Just beautiful. Just beautiful. And then issue four. And you can find these decent price on um, Midtown when they do their sales. These are often ones that uh, I guess nobody's buying them anymore. Suicide Risk is another book that people is on people's minds. It was from like 2016 by Jim Carrey or even earlier. Uh, Mike Carrey. Why am I saying Jim Carrey? What a moron. Um, Mike Carrey. Excuse me. And then this one where I think she looks like Buffy, but clearly is not. Um, but you have to look more closely at this one because she has like a a whip chain in her hand or something like some sick weapon. Clearly this person has done the damage in the supermarket aisle here. Uh, very, very cool. And then she got on the regular covers. I'm missing one or two of them, uh, but you got issue nine. Issue 10, issue 12, which might mean I'm missing 11. Issue 13, which is again a cover that I really like a lot. Issue 14, issue 15, 16, 17, 18. Now this one is a, is a pose that we've seen a few times before. Uh, so you can start to see, again, I'm not accusing her of, like, you know, ripping herself off the way, you know, some people say Matina does. Just kind of similar poses and similar looks and a style that you could call her own, which is really the point there. Not that she's ripping herself off. 19 and 20, which I kind of love that, that stone statue look there. Very cool. Put the suicide risk away. I can't believe I called Mike Carey Jim Carrey. Feel kind of dumb there. And let's take a look at a bunch of indies here. A book that's pretty popular these days. Everybody's talking about it, or they were a month or two ago. Scott Snyder, Charles Small, Charles Soule. Is it uh, Cameron Cooley? I don't know. And I, Matt Wilson on covers. I don't know the, uh, the rest of the creative team, but Undiscovered Country number one. I believe this was a 1 in 25 variant. Uh, Wicked in the Vine. She did three Wicked in the Vine books, and as much as I love Wicked in the Vine, I only have one of them, which kind of confuses me. Barbarella, there was a uh, virgin variant of this. I didn't want to pay the extra money for it. This is good enough for me. Um, I don't think anything is obscured by the barcode or the Barbarella at the bottom. I actually think having the uh, the, the woman as the A there is kind of cool. And this is just classic Hans with the wavy hair and the colors fading off into some other color scheme for the background. Gorgeous as well. Power Rangers. Is, I don't know if this is Power, like Power Ranger. There was an actual Power Ranger pink series. I don't know if this is that or just a regular Power Rangers. Um, Gem and the Holograms. A little too much writing on that cover for me. This is another great one. Um, Assassin's Creed's Origin. Uh, 
don't know much about this. This is from Titan Comics. I mean, I know Assassin's Creed is a video game, but beyond that, I don't know much. Just that I really love that cover. And that I really love this Virgin variant for Sparrowhawk number one. The regular covers on, <coughs> excuse me, on Sparrowhawk were awesome too. It's a four issue, I think, limited series. This is uh, black and white. I think there's either a sketch or a color one to go with this red Sony from Dynamite. Uh, very, very cool cover. Cole, the cat and the skull. Yeah, so these are just kind of like one shots that these, she did. Now, Clockwork Angels, I haven't read this yet, but it's based on, or it's written part by Neil Pert, or based on his lyrics from Rush. So it's something I definitely want to um, read at some point. Uh, Josh Whedon's Dollhouse, cool cover there. Uh, I remember that was a TV show on Fox, I believe. Infinite Loop, I don't know much about this one. Patience, Conviction, and Revenge from Aftershock. I don't know anything about this one, but just the idea that guys are at, I guess, he thought it was a strip club, um, taking a picture, a selfie with a robot friend, drinking a beer, while there's two guns pointed at him. It's a cool concept for the cover. Weatherman. Don't know much about this one. Don't love the hair on this. Uh, but I don't know much about the story. It might fit the story perfectly. I'm just going to leave this here and take a sip of coffee so you guys can look at this. This is her most recent uh, cover. Virgin variant to... Uh, Mercy from Image Comics. Uh, oh my gosh, just absolutely love this. Um, yeah, this is her at the height of her powers. I think she did everything right here to create just a beautiful masterpiece. Love that. Electric Sublime, kind of cool from IDW. So she's worked for every major comic book company, including Dynamite, doing a free comic book day for damsel's mermaid and here's another valiant book psy lords i don't know much about valiant but there you go i think i can do the two more piles to round it out let's see what we got here um yeah i'll take those and then i'll leave that and i'll leave that boom a few more indies here Got a Tomb Raider book here. Tomb Raider 6 and 7 and 8. Did a little work with Angel. Uh oh, there they go. You know that sound when books fall over in your short boxes? Angel here. I love this Angel cover. Look at that. Just beautiful. Just beautiful. Uh, number 12. I think she went and did some Buffy. I think this is kind of cool with the crew. Is it Miles or Giles? Giles, Angel. Can't tell who the two in the end are there, but take a look at this next one. This I absolutely love because I always think it's a guitar, not a weapon. Then I realize it's a weapon. I'm like, oh, that's really cool. And then this last one, this is from Buffy the Reckoning, also by Joss, Joss Whedon. Obviously a famous writer on Buffy and other properties. Spike kicking butt there. She did this line of Generations um, variants, which are very cool. All from Fried Pie. There's the Iron Men. <laughs> Iron Man and Iron Heart. Captain Marvel, Captain Marv. Bell, Peter and Miles, the Spiders, the Marvels, I got this one signed, um, Miss Marvel and Miss Marvel, Hugh Little Wilson wrote that, and then this one uh, is, does that say Bam Pal, Stanley Box Exclusive, Stanley Pal Entertainment, Generations, Jean Grey, and Phoenix. Um, and this is one that didn't know exists and clearly is different than the other ones. And this is, uh, yeah, 
And this is a pretty hard to find one as well. All right. So far, we have stayed away to an extent from the company formerly known as Detective Comics, now known as DC, though their flagship title is still called Detective Comics, and one of my all-time favorite Hans covers. Bam! I love that. I just love the look. On his face, on her face, I love the colors, I love everything about that Rebirth, uh, is that a variant or is that, no, that's, that was actually the cover from 14, which is probably why I'm able to get so many of them, believe me, I have had a lot of them go through my hands, and I finally gotten rid of most of them. 15, I don't like, I don't like something about this, something about their faces, or like the fact that she's flying on his back, maybe just through the streets of Gotham. It doesn't seem like something that happens naturally. So there's another cover, 14. So let's look at that again instead. Um, Amethyst, bringing her back. Go find her first appearance. Nothing to do with Hans. Very cool. Um, up close, the details are gorgeous. A lot of empty space back there. Uh, so again, you got to go looking off center for. Uh, for the detail that, that you kind of miss at first. Even the horse's eye down there. Really nice. Bombshells United, number two. I don't know anything about Dead Man other than the fact that there is a three issue run. These are thicker books. Um, and she did the covers for them. It was written by Brian K. Vaughn. Uh, colors by Jose Villarubia. And I don't know who Medina or Hester are. But these are pretty gorgeous covers too. Again, I don't know anything about these this series, but these are great covers. Again, different story going on in the background and the foreground. You know, these matte colors kind of faded and similar color, and then this bright, stark. Just love it. Just love it. Don't love this one. Don't know why. Something about it looks very artificial. Um, eh. Raven is very cool. This is also an early one that she did. Uh, and then I round out with Max Ride, First Flight, James Patterson's Max Ride, First Flight. Um, this is the free comic book day version. Here's number one. I think this is the second printing of number one. Yeah, second printing. Number two. Number three. Number four, which I really love. And finally, number five. And that brings us back to this one, the one that it all started with for me. Absolutely beautiful. Um, this is the second video in this series. The third one will consist of the ones that I still do not have. So thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it. Would love to hear your feedback.